So this is my 12th year working with Navarro College. I've mixed nine of their 14 national championships um, over the years, um, and including eight in a row, I believe. Um, you know, and then of course the one last year. I've been working with Navarro through Patrick uh, ever since he and I started working together, which at this point has been you know a long time, about six, seven years on the cheer side, and. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, it's been an absolute blast to work on their stuff every season. When they win, it's even better. When the Netflix series came out on January 8th, I don't think anybody, including us, had any idea how how big it was going to be. Um, I think we probably thought, you know, oh, well, a few people in the cheerleading industry will watch it and, you know, it'll, it'll get some buzz and that'll be it. Um, but the mainstream exposure that it's gotten has been incredible. Um, you know, for us, uh, it's allowed us to, you know, license last year's music, um, out, you know, on for the Netflix series, but also uh, on opportunities like the Ellen Show um, when they performed and and things of that nature. Uh, so with the with the exposure that it's gotten, um, you know, we we knew that that the whole world would be watching, um, you know, to see what we're doing for for this year's music. Uh, so we took that into consideration and and we really um, we really tried to up our game. We we up our we tried to up our musicality. Uh, we tried to up our writing. Uh, we tried to make sure that we really told the story, um, you know, from last year and, and what the team is going for this year. Patrick and, and myself, like we've been evangelizing for a long time, this idea of trying to make competitive cheer music much more musical, much more song-like. Um, you know, when I first heard cheer music and even, you know, even the best stuff in the industry, it was very, very jarring and very kind of non-musical. I mean, it was very much choreography and it was catered to choreographing um, routines but now I mean we have we have full artists come in we have a full apparatus that we use to create these bits of material and we have amazing records I mean some of these songs that we put in these mixes if you were to expand them out we have you know catalogs of incredible material that we've been able to develop and I'm super proud to see it because part of the reason I started working with Patrick in general was I was brought on board to, to try and steer kind of the the sound of what he was doing and what our other producers at New Level are doing towards mainstream music and the fact that we're finally getting mainstream recognition for what we've been doing sort of behind the scenes for the last I mean Patrick for the last 20 years myself for the last six seven I mean it's it's very gratifying to see people finally take notice the mainstream exposure that the that the show is given uh, cheerleading and competitive cheerleading as a whole has been incredible um, you know I had people reaching out to me to do articles, which I never anticipated. Uh, I did an article with uh, a local magazine called Voyage Atlanta. Um, I did The Vulture. Uh, I did an article for uh, Vice Magazine, and they did kind of a historical take on all of cheerleading music, how it started, uh, how it went through, um, uh, what it's been through to get to you know pretty much all original music now. Um, and then I did another um, another article with The Fader, which is a, a really big music publication. Um, so you know that was a lot of fun. It was it was nice to get to share my story and uh, share what we do and share something that I'm passionate about and been working on for 20 years. Um, you know, so it's it, it it's been kind of a niche niche thing that you only know about if you're in our industry up until now. And now all of a sudden this light is being shined on competitive cheerleading um, because of the Netflix series and, and in a positive way because it portrays competitive cheerleading and the athleticism and, and the the seriousness of it um, in a way that I think no show has, has ever done before. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I agree. It's it's We've had more people reaching out to us than ever before about music and it's it's been really cool to see because not only is cheerleading itself a pretty niche industry, but the music industry within cheer is even more niche because it's a totally different type of production that doesn't really exist anywhere else in the world. And so to have you know people who are digging deep into cheer as an industry reach out to us and get to get to kind of our little niche within that industry has been really cool because every conversation we've had has been fascinating to people. They um, tend to be pretty interested in what we're doing because it is it is so unique and we're kind of leveraging all of the skills that we have developed and used in mainstream music as well as the knowledge base that we have in cheerleading and we're forming this whole kind of new um, you know new genre of music and it's been very cool to have people take note and write about it for us we're here in the in the studio uh got amori here with me we're working on content for navarro college 
Um, you know, we just got through recording with the Ying Yang Twins. We're waiting on Bone Crusher to come in. And tonight we're recording with uh, Lauren Schaefer and David Garcia, um, the two uh, building sections, the melodic song sections. Uh, one's going to be the stunt, one's going to be the pyramid. Um, you know, so we're going over our ideas, making sure that um, we know exactly what we're doing, how we're going to produce it, how we want the melodies to come out, like what layers we want. Uh, the singers to record because when they come in we walk them through all of that So I've worked with, we worked with Bone Crusher since 2013 so seven years and uh, Ying Yang Twins the first time I worked with them was The very next year so like 2014 yeah 2014 so about six years off and on Bone Crusher was one of the first. He was the first. Yeah, the first celebrity voice kind of ever in a cheer mix. Yeah, he was the first. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. Had they been in the mix before? Uh, yes, actually, Ying Yang was, was in Navarro's mix maybe 2015, I think. And then uh, Bone Crusher's been in there maybe like every year for the last like four or five years. Um, it's, it's kind of a become a trademark now, and the kids ask me for him. So, uh, yeah, I, I like to make sure they're happy. Writing for Bone Crusher is, is a lot of fun. I mean, I've been working with Bone Crusher for seven years now, so I kind of know what he can knock out of the park and, and record really, really well. So, um, you know, I believe Amori and I, uh, who's, you know, my lead writer, um, he and I sat down and we wrote the lyrics together. I kind of had an idea of what I wanted it to say. And, um, you know, we sat down and, and pieced that together. And then, um, you know, he came in and, you know, obviously knocked it out of the park like he always does. He has such an incredible voice. Um, you know, with Ying Yang, I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to get Ying Yang because they're getting ready to go on a world tour, um, uh, this Millennium Tour. And uh, so I was reaching out and I tried to get in touch with them. And at first I couldn't get in touch with them. And then I finally, finally was able to reach them. And then they called me back and said, hey, we can be there tomorrow. So uh, we had we had the vocals written and, uh, and ready to go. But I wasn't sure if I was going to have to have a different artist do it. Uh, so it ended up working out, um, you know, when... When the Ying Yang Twins come in to record, it's always it's always fun. It's um, especially when they sometimes I have them come one at a time, um, and, and sometimes that works out pretty well. But this time they were able to both come at the same time, and um, you know they they love they love what we wrote for them. Again, Amori and I wrote wrote it together, um, and uh, you know they actually said this is one of the best things that we've ever written for them from all the times that we worked together. So um, it sounds really Ying Yang. It definitely turned out like you know like the Ying Yang Twins and I can't wait for uh, you know for people to hear it mixing them is a lot of fun too. Um, both bone crusher and the Ying Yang twins obviously very different voices very different sounds and so I get to have a lot of fun um, you know finding different ways to treat their material and and get it so it blends into these mixes seamlessly for you guys um, obviously Ying Yang twins very hyped up I have a lot of material to reference off them so I know how to kind of balance out their ad-libs and some of their um, their dual vocals when it's the two of them together, which is always kind of a fun creative adventure for me. Bone Crusher just has one of the biggest voices in the entire industry, and so to have him in any of our mixes is always a pleasure. Navarro specifically because his voice literally growls like a dog every time you hear it, and so <laughs> it's the perfect companion for uh, you know the work we're doing here for you guys this year, and we're super excited for everyone to hear it. That's a good point. When whenever we record Ying Yang Twins. We play the demo, we give them the lyrics, and we literally just press record and let them do whatever it is that they want to do, and we don't delete anything. And then we send all of that stuff to Anthony, and then Anthony and I kind of go through it and decide what to leave and what to take out because they just kind of get lost in, when, when, in what they're doing and just record a whole bunch of stuff. So there's usually no... no uh, uh, no shortage of material. <laughs> I think a lot of the fun things that you guys are going to hear in the mix that will probably end up being like quotable moments, a lot of things that stuff they just made up on the spot, you know, and we just kept it in there and strategically placed it. So we'll see how that goes when, uh, when we finish up the mix. There are a few things based on this year's, uh, uh, in this year's mix from last year's uh, routine and in the show. Um, you know, one of the inspirations for one of the songs um, was in their chant, uh, the chant that you heard them do, and like I think it was like episode five and six as they go to Daytona, um, they say "Welcome to the Ring of Fire," and the whole team repeats "Welcome to the Ring of Fire," and I thought that was an incredible uh, song uh, title. Uh, so we decided to write a song called uh, "Ring of Fire." 
Um, you know, another thing, you know, it, it says, you know, there's a little snippet in there that says, you know who the best is, catch us on Netflix. So we made sure that we made that a part of the story because it's such a big part of their culture now. And obviously, I mean, the pressure of working with Navarro um, on a given year anyway is great because they're one of the most winning teams in the industry. And, um, you know, for this year, even more so after the show, it was our job to try and top our game even more based on what we did last year. And we have some amazing artists in here this time. We have some incredible content and we're we're definitely uh, extending the legacy and the story of, of what they've brought to you guys further for this next year. You know, I'm, I'm really excited for them to hear um, the detail of, of uh, some of the lyrics. Uh, I, I think they're really gonna like the Ring of Fire part. Yeah, I think they're gonna, gonna awesome. I think they're gonna love the Pyramid song. Um, you know, the Pyramid song talks about building a dynasty, which is what you know, which is what Navarro's done. Uh, but then there are some other little fun, clever parts that when they figure them out, I think they're really gonna enjoy it and enjoy performing to it. Been through the valley of darkness. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this feature and uh, taking a look behind the scenes uh, at what it takes to make uh, music for Navarro College. Shout out to all of our fans and friends. Without you, we would not be able to do what we do. So thank you guys so much for letting us be a part of your work. Um, Navarro specifically, thank you guys so much for letting us take a stab at uh, you know continuing your story of greatness. Um, we thank you greatly. <laughs>